Hello and welcome to NAB 2022. Uh, welcome to Black Magic Design. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through some of the key new features in DaVinci Resolve 18. So the first feature we're going to look at is the object mask. Um, in DaVinci Resolve 17, um, we introduced some AI that gave users the ability to mask people. But now what we've done is the AI now has the ability to mask objects. Um, and really, it can be absolutely any object. So if we take a look at this shot here of the biker sort of flying down the hill, uh, what I want to do is I want to select him and ignore the background. So unbelievably, with the object mask, what I can do is I can just draw a line over him. And if I turn on my mask overlay, as you can see, it will select the biker and the bike, but not the background. What I can actually do is I can just sort of tweak the mask to be a little bit better. And then what I can start to do is I can start to track so if I hit track, what will happen is Resolve will go through and track the biker and the bike. So once that's tracked, what I can actually do is I can turn off my overlay. And then if I were to add a node, I can simply take the alpha output of my object mask. And now I can affect the cyclist. So if I go and load in my curves, I can just adjust the rider give him a little bit more contrast like so uh, and then also what I can do is I can add an outside node to this and adding an outside node which will allow me to adjust the background and not the cyclist so again if I just drop the contrast so the cyclist has a lot of contrast and my background doesn't you can now see that we have a pretty cool roto effect. So I can isolate the rider and grade him and grade the background separately. And you can try this on all sorts of things. It works on all sorts of things. You can do it on things such as sort of flat surfaces like pictures. So again, I, what I can do on this shot is I can just add a node in here. And again, with the object mask, I can just drag a selection around the pitch. Again, if I turn on my mask overlay, you can see it selected the pitch. Again, you can add extra points. So again, where the pitch is missing here, what I can do is I can just go in and sort of add selections to this. Again, it's not too much of an issue. I've got selections here because it can be used in conjunction with things like power windows. So again, just to avoid anything spilling over into the sky, I can easily just throw a power window over that. Oops, I just need to invert it. So again, if I just invert the power window, and now as you can see, I've got rid of that. So, you know, now what I can do is the same thing as I did before. I can add another node, maybe pipe in the alpha output from the previous node which is the object mask and then there's several different ways of doing this i might like to use the color warper and then just sort of warp the pitch color green really easily and the object mask can said it can select any objects you know it can do it can do things like cars, it can do hair, it can do a man sat on a horse, it can even do things like fire, you can use it for sky replacement. So it's incredibly powerful for colorists just wanting to pull out objects in an image to grade them. Again, in, in DaVinci Resolve 18, what we've done is we've um, introduced a lot of new Resolve effects. Uh, one of these is a very clever effect called the depth map. So if I just go and search for that, you can see there is my depth map. And I can just add this to my node tree. And as you can see, what it will do is it will give me a preview. So what the AI, again, it's an AI feature. What it's doing is it's looking at the image and working out what's in the foreground and what's in the background. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the near limit a little bit.
so again, as you can see. So basically, when something becomes white, it's going to have sort of the full effect applied to it. When something's grey, maybe a little bit of the effect. When something's black, it's not going to have anything applied to it. So as you can see, I can create a depth map like this. Uh, what I need to do is just turn off my depth map preview. Uh, and then what I can actually do, again, is I can add another node. And again, do the same thing as I did with the object mask and pipe in the alpha output. Now what I can do is, again, there's several different ways of doing this. I can maybe go into my global controls and I'll pump the color really, really bright. So I'll pump the color green. But as you can see, it really gets across the power of the depth map. So the trees in the foreground have a really vivid green color applied. The, mid, the trees sort of in the middle have some of the color applied, but then obviously, oopsie, obviously the background um, doesn't have anything applied to it. So again, you know, you could try and sort of cheat depth of field with this. So again, what I could do is I could, same thing I did with the object mask, I could add an outside node and in the effects, um, I am just going to go and grab a lens blur. It will be quite harsh to begin with, I think. But if I just grab a lens blur, as you can see, you can sort of cheat depth of field. Admittedly, my blur size is a little bit too much. But as you can see, you can start to sort of try and cheat depth of field by using the depth map. So yeah, what we've got is we now have a surface tracker as well because said Resolve has always been able to track um, windows, but when you start to get to more complex surfaces like skin and material, um, you want a tracker that may be able to warp with the movement of something. So what we've introduced is a Resolve effect called a surface tracker. So what I can do is I can add the surface tracker to my image. Uh, and to begin with, what I'm gonna do is just draw some bounds on. So what I can do with the bounds is I can just draw the bounds of the tracker. Now if I click on the mesh button, it shows me the mesh. So the mesh will give me the, the detail of when the surface may warp or change. In this case, I don't need quite as many points on this. I'm just going to drop this down to about 30. Um, and then what I can do is I can go into track. So again, I can actually go in and say track forwards. And what it will do is it will go in and track the movement. There we go. So now what I can do is I'm just going to wind this back to the start. And now what I want to do is I, now I've got the surface track. What I really need to do is apply something to that surface track. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is simply add a corrector node and I'm going to pipe the corrector node into, um, a, basically with a connect, corrector node I'm going to pipe the original image into the connector uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this to the surface track. So now what I've done is I've attached this to the surface track. So now what I can do is I can go and grab a power window. And I'm never going to make it as a makeup artist, but let's see. Uh, I'll just adjust that a little bit. What I can actually do is just add a couple of power windows to the shop. And again, what I can do here is I can, I can sort of pump the color up and there's various ways of doing this. So I might just use my global controls on my HDR tool. And as you can see, I can sort of pump that in. My masks need, do need a little bit of refinement. So if I just soften those out a touch, like so. But what it's done is it's taken that mask information and then it's piped into the surface tracker. So those masks will, in essence, follow the movement and shape of the surface tracker.